Okay, it's 8.30 and uh, welcome to my vineyard ramble. It's just setting the scene here. It's an absolutely glorious, glorious morning. There's no wind at all. So no noise from the wind this morning, uh, but as is now becoming the norm, there is the noise of a, a tractor in the distance because uh, there's no wind so everybody's out protecting their grapes this morning. So great to see you all. I'm going to try a new function this morning. I'm going, if you have just general questions you'd like to ask me, I'm going to try the question and answers um, button down at the bottom of your screens. So if you have any questions you'd like me to answer, can you pl uh, please um, just type them in there and then towards the end I'll have a look at the questions and get back to you. But here we go. So just to locate where we are this morning, I'm next to an olive tree. And in the background here, we have the Pyrenees. You just see the snow-capped mountains. That's the Canigou, the foothills of the Pyrenees. So that's in uh, Catalonia, just over the border in Roussillon. We're actually in the Languedoc. You can see I'm in the valley this morning. So I'm in the valley uh, between Touchon and Paziol. And for those of you who are hoping to see the castle, there we have the Chateau d'Aguilar. So the sun's behind it, you can just make out the outline of it. That's a Cathar castle. For those of you who have been down here, they're absolutely fabulous. Cathar castles up here, 11th century, on the border between Spain and France, the former border. Defence castles, now known as Cathar castles. Pan around here, over this way would be Narbonne. So Narbonne about an hour over here, and then well into the longer dock over there. Come around. Good morning, Diane. Diane's here, she's got her top off this morning too. It's lovely and warm, it's about 16 degrees. And here in the background, behind this olive tree, we've got the Tosh Mountain. So we're down here this morning in the valley. And I wanted to show you, I'm quite excited because this is its quite a special vineyard because it's actually our recent purchase. Um, we bought this this year and it's about a hectare of Grenache Gris. So uh, some people think we're completely crazy. These vines were 70 years old. Um, they hadn't really, well, they needed some real loving care, actually. They were 70 years old and there was absolutely no way that we could get a tractor through here. So when we bought it, it basically looked like a jungle. It really looked like a, a jungle. And the problem we had, because we're organic, we needed to get through these rows here to be able to plough. Now, when we first bought it, there were so many branches crossing over from the vines that it was impossible to get down with a tractor. It's not a big tractor either. It's our little chouniard, the old 50-year-old little tractor that is a horse width, horse width wide, which means that it can just get in between these rows here. Um, but there was no way it was coming down here. So we had a lot of tidying up to do here. Um, it's so, it was so much work. We spent a week, when I say we, that's your mark, a week literally cutting the branches. So if I come down here, you can see now I can walk down here quite easily. Okay, and there's no branches coming out and hitting me at all. So uh, Jean-Marc basically got his chainsaw out and uh, if we look at the vines here, it's a little Grenache, so 70 year old, it's Grenache Gris. Hi, mom. Um, and the Grenache, basically what we did was we um, chainsawed the bigger branches so that they were in a nice line. And we've tried to sort of get them lining up see here nicely so you can see where on the vines here we literally just had to trim off the branches with the chainsaw um, thinking chainsaw massacre it was a bit like that we had so much wood from here so uh, we've got heaps and heaps of old vines 70 year old vine shoes so um, that was the first thing we needed to do so we came in and cut off the branches. We could then get the trailer in, the tractor in. And as you can see here, we have actually been in and we were able to cut the grass 
you can see where we've cut it and where we haven't cut it. So we were able to cut the grass and we also rotivated it. We were going to plough, but we just felt that if we ploughed, uh, the vines have already been disturbed enough with the chainsaw that uh, if we ploughed too deeply, we didn't want to upset the root structure this year. So we just did a very light rotivate. We rotivated very lightly, just sort of scratched the surface of the vines, of the soil. And you can see here, it managed, it took the grass off and just lifted the top layer of soil. So we've still got quite a bit of work to do. You can see here, there's still grass in between the rows. Yeah, just seeing your comments here. Yeah, Marcel, it's great. And <laughs> we're gonna have lots of barbecues this summer with all the old vine wood that came, that came off. And as you're here, I was so excited about showing you my vineyard that I forgot the first little press the button. So, okay, now there's lots of you here. Let's have a quick first one to press the button and um, I'll send you a sachet of wild herbs. So they're wild rosemary herbs that are dried and um, they're from our organic vineyards here in Touchon. So this morning, I think the first one to put up four castles and I'll send you some rosemary in the post. So the first one for four castles. There's probably a little delay here while you're see who was the, f the quickest on the buzzer this morning. Yeah, wine time, London, fantastic. Hamish, you're a close second, Steve Sutton. Wow, you put lots up there. Somebody, Maxim put, yep, uh, what? okay. So fantastic, great. So let's have a look, a closer look at these vines. So this is Grenache Gris. Uh, Grenache Gris is my favorite white grape variety here. Uh, I love it because of the, the lovely acidity and freshness that you get in the final wine. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got a lovely minerality and that's quite unusual for white wines of this area. Uh, to get a lovely dry white wine but with a, a good freshness is quite difficult and that's why the Grenache Gris uh, is particularly good. Uh, Grenache Gris, there is obviously Grenache Noir as well, there's Grenache Blanc, so you're probably familiar with the red Grenache, there's a white Grenache as well and there's also grey. If we look at the vines, uh, I'm going to show you how to recognise a Grenache. Just look at this one here. So if you look here, at the leaf. So what we've got here, sort of a, a lovely vibrant colour. Can you see that? Um, so a lovely green vibrant colour. And what we're looking at on these is that it's a nice rounded shape. So if you flatten this out, you've got a lovely round shape. If you remember the Carignan was very indented, sort of went in and out. This is a lovely round shape and it's also uh, very smooth on the surface. So smooth, almost waxy surface. And if you turn it over, I'll get an, it's a bit in the shadow. There are absolutely no hairs on the back. No hairs, smooth on the back, waxy on the front. Very few veins on the top of the, the leaf and a lovely round shape with hardly any indentations. That's the Grenache. So, some more here. Take a little look at the grapes as well. There we are, you are the first people. Look at these lovely, lovely little grapes. These are the little Grenache Gris grapes just forming here, you see? And then we've got lovely, they're looking, like you say, so healthy, so happy, these vines in the sunshine this morning. Look at those. Lovely Grenache Gris. So I keep the Grenache Gris separate. We do 100% Grenache Gris from the old vines. Uh, this is the first year that we've taken over this vineyard. So uh, we're going to see, it'll be quite a surprise um, and interesting to see this year, the quality of the grapes that have come from this vine. When I say we take it over, 
Uh, it means that we purchased it from somebody who was in the cooperative previously. So he would have been doing conventional farming on it. And it's our challenge to get this vineyard back and into organic farming. Uh, and as I was mentioning, it's a lot of hard work, lots of ploughing. This year it's been particularly wet and rainy. So uh, we've had um, we've had to come in and cut the grass and we need to come in and cut the grass again here. So let's just walk up towards that lovely Cathar Cast. It's such a beautiful morning here. And just a look, the lovely flowers. So these are lovely uh, purple flowers and they're actually called mauve, <laughs> mauve in French. I'm not sure what they're called in English. If anybody knows, there's some more here. Lovely purple flowers. Look. Just gorgeous. So if anybody knows what those are, I'd love to know. And then we have also have dandelions or the dandelion lookalikes here just absolutely gorgeous and then we have a little old vine you see some of them are literally on the floor so there's about 4,000 of these old vines in the vineyard uh, can you imagine all the work that there was to get them back into shape just over here so there's quite a few of these in the vineyards as well this morning we got those and they are thistles not any type of thistles they are donkey thistles don't ask me why they're called donkey thistles they might not be called donkey thistles in english but that's donkey as in um the chardon d'anne but just so beautiful. Thistle, yes, Hamish, they're thistles. And then it's coming, let's pan round, another view over there on the mountains. And so the Grenache Gris from this vintage is going to be quite a, an interesting project because it's the first year that we'll have actually made the wine from this particular vineyard we're very excited about it this is our challenge people think we're crazy uh, buying these old vines because there's so much work in them to get them back to organic farming but when you come out it's just absolutely beautiful gorgeous and we just think you know the quality of the wine here comes from the older vines they have lower yields so it just makes it more concentrated lovely some more thistles here and a view. Hopefully you can hear the birds. Oh, I'm learning things on here. They're named after Don shot for the thistles. Oh, the oh, the donkey thistles. Is that oh excellent? And uh, we've also got some milk thistles in this vineyard. Uh, I don't know if any of you know milk thistle or sow thistle. So I'm now just walk up here looking for some sow thistles. Uh, the sow thistle uh, is named because it was given to um, sows uh, to make their milk flow when they were feeding the piglets. But actually the wild boar absolutely love it down here. So I found some, but it's all been nibbled away by the wild boar. And just coming through right let me see if I can get some of your questions up oh, it's just beautiful and some lovely olive trees there's an olive grove planted just here what sort of yield yeah good question thanks Louise um, the yield we don't know I mean the yield on our most of our old vines is about 15 to 25 hectolitres per hectare so about 15 to 20 hectolitres so if we get 15 off this this year uh, we'll be doing well but again it's the quality we're interested in looking at the quality of the wine that comes off it uh, the mauve flower in english is a mallow wild flower excellent thanks very much i'll write that down and learn that one thanks melissa um mallow flower lots of people coming in for that let me see 
the new future. So just looking at your questions. Here's one from Matty, which says, would you put wires in the vineyard like you have with the Syrah one? Um, what's the advantage of having, and I imagine that says the mom was. So no, we're going to keep these as gobelet vines. Um, basically, these vines are 70 years old and they're far too old now to start training them onto wires. So the advantage if you're planting a vineyard is it's much easier to work if you plant um, it on wires and trellising system. These are gobelet vines, they're old. I think we've um, formed them enough with the chainsaw to get them nice and so that we can get the plow in. And we're going to leave them now. We, we wouldn't be training these up. So thanks for that question, Matty. Um, what difference is being in the valley make? That's from Adam. Um, well, Jean-Marc's got a bit of a smile on his face because it's actually flat, as you can see. So it's easier to work. Uh, the one problem with being in the valley, it can get waterlogged when we do have that heavy rain. Uh, so that's one problem. It can get a little bit hotter as well. So it's actually good to have a mixture of uh, valley floor vineyards and ones on the side of the mountain. Um, mind you, Grenache Gris it is just so impossible to find. It's just so when this one came up for sale, a hectare, 4000 vines all in one space, you know, we just jumped on top of it, so to speak. Hope to see you again tomorrow. A demain!